Let's see if we can uh, conjure up any uh, fish. Once again, using the uh, Rebel Popper. Ooh, that was a nice big fish. And I'll try where I saw that fish just jump. See if I can get it to hit. Well, I got my first fish. Careful, buddy. Don't want you to get hurt. It caught just in that little spot. Let's see if I can. There we go. I don't want to hurt you. What a beautiful fish. Say hi to everybody. So we're gonna let you go. Fish number one for today. Hopefully that's a good sign. And uh, that actually breaks the uh, spot over here where I kept saying, boy, it's a good spot. I just can't figure out why uh, a fish isn't biting. Well, I finally got a fish to bite over there. Nothing uh, huge, but at least a fish. So I'm excited about that. And hopefully that's a uh, prelude uh, what's about to follow so let's get uh, fishing and see if we can catch some more loving the fact that I can be out this is our last uh, full day of uh, being here in uh, Florida uh, we might be here uh, tomorrow uh, for just the morning part of it so I'm gonna be trying to do a little bit of fishing then uh, but after that we'll be heading out and starting to make our way back to the north which we're not necessarily looking forward to they've uh, had some incredibly cold days and unfortunately uh, we gotta head back up that way they've had some snow and stuff like that and here we are i'm in shorts to 70 degrees this morning going to be up in the 80s and of course we have to get back to work and get back to uh doing the normal things that we have to take care of in our lives but um, I tell you what it's been a wonderful uh, vacation what a pretty little uh, bird up there on the uh, dock I'm sure he's looking for some fish too Finally. Oh, he kicked off at the last minute. Uh, that's the second fish I had like that today. Yes. Oh, he kicked it off. Let's see if I can, just listening to that sound of nature and the beauty of it, it's just uh, so surreal. Oh, fish hit it. There's definitely uh, a wind that's definitely messing me up today. And it almost at any, almost with any attempt that I make, I'm battling uh, the effects of the wind. So even when a fish is hitting it, it's just, it's, it's like everything's off. Oh, got one. Let's see if I can keep them. Oh, 
All right, yes. Get this off. What a beautiful fish, fish number two. Thank you so much. Let you go. This should be a video on how to fish when the wind is blowing on a kayak and you don't have an anchor. <clears throat> Cause that's what it's, that's what it's mounting up to. <laughs> how to fish on this kayak and uh, work around the wind looking for the pauses looking for those moments where you can take a quick uh, opportunity to try to um, catch that fish in, in the moment of calm you may be one of those fishermen who sort of like myself every once in a while you can just kind of feel if an area is gonna um, do well for you or if it's not and uh, sometimes you just, you gotta go with your gut feeling if you kind of feel that, you know, I don't think I'm gonna get quite the action that I would be looking for. Then, uh, you know, particularly if you don't have a whole lot of time, go with that gut feeling. Um, I've had many times where trusting my gut, going and, and doing something just because it just intuition or something leads you to do it has led to uh, some just beautiful, amazing fish that I've caught that I would not have caught if I remained in uh, the spot. I've gone out where two of us have gone out, had different directions. Um, one of us catch fish, the other one did not. And it could all be a, sometimes a matter of using the same thing. And the big difference was basically uh, you know, sometimes it's just that intuition, just something telling you this is where you should cast or this is what you should do, this is when you should do it, and you follow that intuition and to your surprise, to your amazement, all of a sudden, boom, you're, 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 you're the one catching them and you're the one bringing them in. Uh, I was wondering why it wasn't quite popping. Always check your baits while you're casting them. As you may just find out that it's tangled up and that could be the difference maker of you catching a fish versus you uh, not having anything happen. Um, uh, if you're, you probably figure out that what I'm trying to do is take my popper at this point in time and go along the dock. If the wind will permit me. Because if there's a fish that's just hanging out underneath that dock and it sees or hears something popping um, on the surface a lot of times it will dart out real quick and hurry up and uh, eat that and try to go back under the dock so I've in the past caught myself some real nice fish trying to do that now <clears throat> if I discover that that doesn't work the next thing I try is a tube bait. And you can see I got a tube bait here. And uh, what I'm gonna try to do right now is to put a few casts underneath the dock and see if uh, there happens to be a fish in there, but maybe it's not aggressively gonna try to feed on um, a topwater lure, but instead will certainly eat something that's uh, dangled and and behind them or in front of them with the uh, lure in fact my experience in this lake has been that the biggest fish tend to be the ones that are biting on um, the tube bait versus the uh, popper All right, well, this should be a decent uh, spot. This 
surprisingly uh, fishing in this lake. I have only caught bass. I know there's other fish in here, um, but primarily the only fish that I've seen to have uh, responses from have been the, uh, the bass, to which I'm grateful. I mean, now it's, I was the, uh, I was the one I was going for. Yes. I thought there might be a decent one in there. He got, he was hungry. He took this all the way in his mouth. Let's see if I can get the... Buddy, I'm trying not to hurt you. As you can see, I didn't hurt him, didn't mess up his gills or anything like that. He's doing very well, but I had to surgically try to uh, remove the hooks. And just for those of you who go fishing and you find that occasionally you hook a fish in the gill set uh, back in here, the best thing to do is to go from behind, take the fish, loosen it and go from there and then back your hooks out and slowly one by one put the hooks through the gill set where it's not ripping them or tearing them or making them bleed and then put them through there and then of course when they come out this way just gingerly and carefully go the fish may be more traumatized because you're holding it and handling it longer but um, it's better to do that than to kill it but i'm going to get them back in before uh, he suffers uh, any lack of oxygen but uh, thank you so much. Great fish. And he went, so he's in good shape. But yeah, as you can see, um, I'm not finding any blood or anything like that. It was not, uh, it was not hurt in the sense of uh, that. So basically, it worked out very well. But it was, it was in that position where I've seen other people, um, you know, just give a yank or uh, more aggressively try to unhook that fish and when you do that you're just you're messing that fish up and that fish may may not survive um, and most times you can get it out without uh, needing to uh, injure the fish if you just take a little bit of time put some slack in your line which I did and then just uh, reposition and work from behind the fish in the gill area and just slowly remove those hooks because most times they're just gingerly in there and you can most times just uh, pop them right out. All right, let's get back to fishing. Got another one. I sort of lucked out. I found myself uh, hitting a period where there's very little to no wind. And so it's uh, giving me a great opportunity to be able to catch these fish. When I first got out, I thought for sure there would be some rain, but uh, their rain didn't seem to come. It was not projected rain, but what a beautiful fish. Gonna let him go. What makes this uh, difficult too for me is because I know I go home tomorrow and uh, I know that, you know, if I'm fortunate and I get an opportunity to fish one more time tomorrow, um, of course, that will be a, a true blessing and treat. Um, but if I do not get a chance to fish tomorrow and today, in fact, right now is my uh, last of uh, the fishing that I'm going to have. I know I'm walking into a situation where when I go back, I probably will not have an opportunity to do any fishing unless it's like ice fishing and or uh, fishing from a river and trying to just do some cold water fishing where I might hook onto a bass or... Uh, something like that but this this kind of fishing that I'm presently uh, experiencing I, I just I know that um, I'm gonna have to wait until late May before I have this kind of uh, enjoyable warm weather uh, just get out there the fish are biting and, and things are just going crazy so um, with catching fish but this has truly been a blessing and um, 
As you know, I set a goal of catching 150 fish. Um, I'm not sure where my count is at this point. Um, I will be posting that on the videos. You will see it where my count stands and if I catch any more um, beyond uh, what I'm sharing with you right now. I'm certainly hoping to catch um, some more fish before and that I'm not done um, with where I'm at. But I know I'm probably in the 20s now, uh, somewhere near with the number of fish that I've caught. And so it would be kind of cool to leave Florida and uh, have put myself at the, uh, you know, catching 30 bass um, or any species for that matter, but catching uh, at least 30 fish that will give me uh, some hope and something to hold on to and realize that basically the 150 is more reasonable than uh, I initially had thought. I had thought that was a big goal. I know some of you um, have shared my Facebook uh, friends and also my YouTube friends that you know, um, you certainly think that 150 is, is more than doable. Um, but, you know, I think I shared with you part of my reasoning for that was I'd often be, I would often be asked by somebody, how many fish did I catch? Or how many fish do I think I would catch in a year? And I never knew the answer because I never actually kept a tally of, of how many fish that I actually uh, experienced the pleasure of catching. But then it got me thinking and I started to wonder. I wonder how many I do catch. And to me, uh, you know, I thought, well, 50, you know, you know, I'm sure maybe 50. And then in my head when I started to process that, I'm like, well, I know I catch probably more than 50. But then the next big number was, well, you know, 75 or 100. And uh, for some reason, 100 fish just seemed like, wow, you know, that's that's, that's probably cool, that's probably somewhere where I'm at. So when I put the stretch of 150 uh, in my mind, I was, I was looking at trying to catch potentially, um, you know, 50% more than what I would generally think I would possibly be able to catch. And so I was thinking that was a pretty big uh, challenge. Um, but you know, after this uh, vacation and with what I'm catching, I mean, I, I'm making a good dent in just a very short period of time. I may find that I, uh, you know, surpass and beat this by a significant uh, number. But for me, it's just the pleasure and at the end, having the ability to tell people this is exactly what I was able to catch and uh, no longer needing to say, well, I think, or, you know, it, yeah, it's possible I did this. So let's get back to fishing and see if we can get another fish to bite. Oh, little one 